Welcome to today's episode of Cold Heart Complaints, the um, the channel where I do shit. So, yeah, it's a living train wreck, honestly. Uh, I mentioned before on this channel that I went to Portland Retro Gaming Expo. While I was there, I was able to hang out with my friend King of Archers, as seen here in this file photo that's probably somewhere on the screen. I'm gonna say it's right here. Right here, file photo on the screen. Look at that, King of Archers. Check out her YouTube channel. Link's in the description below. She's awesome. Uh, she made me buy this. Um, which is today's topic, it's called Cricket on the Hearth. Uh, she convinced me to buy this, thinking it was a great idea. Fuck you, King. So this is a DVD copy of a TV special that aired back in 1967. It's based on a Charles Dickens story, which I had never heard about, and after seeing this, I can see why I never heard about it, because this is... This is fucking awful. Anyway, so typically on this channel, I don't just rip bad movies, it's not typically how I go about things, but this, I want to talk about this, I want to just go through this, it's the holiday season, and I just want to do something fun, something different, you know, this is, this is different, a heads up, I'm going to be getting to full spoilers, but god damn, who cares about spoilers for Crooked on the Hearth, you shouldn't, I don't, let's just, let's just get right to it, okay guys? Cricket on the Hearth begins with a cricket named Crockett. And sure, I'll let that pass. Who wears a top hat and a jacket and can talk to humans because whatever, don't question it. He meets a toy maker named Caleb Plummer who nearly steps on him, then offers to let him live with him and his daughter Bertha because crickets are good luck. The day he arrives, Bertha's fiance Edward is going out to sea to serve in the Royal Navy for two years. Then there's a song that is, uh, your love away. Wait for it, it's there. Okay, it's five minutes into this movie and I already can't not talk about the animation. The animation of this movie is so bare bones, it's ridiculous. You don't see their faces move at all. It's just their lips. Maybe their eyebrows a little teeny tiny bit. The mouths here barely move. Movement is jerky and ugly. The art style itself is just bad. Look at this guy's hands. They're so fat. It's ridiculous. The male characters all have these chins made of fucking granite. They look so stiff. It's unsettling. Fast forward to a year and a half later and Bertha and her father are making toys for Christmas. When suddenly, uh... Oh my god, this is gonna be one of those specials where they have a song every five fucking minutes, isn't it? Then a green looking man comes in and informs Bertha that Edward is lost at sea, which makes Bertha so sad she collapses and goes blind. Wait, goes blind? How the fuck did it blind her? Can you go blind from sadness? Okay, let's see here. Uh, can sadness make you blind? Wait. Ah, here we are. Nope, that is not even remotely possible. I mean, I guess women are just too fragile. They get so sad their bodies do something that isn't even physically possible. Great messages here. Great, great messages. So now with his daughter practically comatose with grief for her lost fiance, Caleb devotes all of his time to nursing her, neglecting his work and taking out a lo- What the fuck? The fuck is this xenomorph looking motherfucker? I swear this has to be some anti-Semitic shit because they could not make this guy look any more like a stereotype. He's even rubbing his fucking hands together like he's some cartoon villain. This is fucking awful. So he runs out of money and they get booted from their home and eventually he finds a toy factory where they go in. Oh my God, why? Well, the owner of the place, Mr. Tackleton, gives him a place to stay, but he won't pay him because like, I don't know, he doesn't want to. I don't, I don't want to pay you. Fuck you. Caleb accepts the offer because he's desperate, then decides to ask where the other toy makers are, only to find out that there are none. You know, Tackleton, it's not much of a toy factory if you don't actually have like anyone making toys. What a shithole. Do you know what else is a shithole? Their living quarters. But that's fine. Caleb decides to lie to Bertha and say they're great. And that his boss is a swell man who made him the head of the factory. Which I guess is technically accurate since he's the only one working there. He then sings another fucking song and tells Bertha she doesn't need to see. He'll see for her and lie constantly about everything that he sees. Which he then kicks up to a whole nother level, pretending to have a cook and a servant. Having two separate realities because Bertha just can't handle knowing her impossible blindness drove him to being flat broke. Then before Christmas, Caleb runs into this old man who somehow is all gray except for his blonde hair and eyebrows. Not suspicious at all, Edward. I mean, mysterious old man who couldn't possibly be Edward in disguise. Yeah, whatever. On Christmas Eve, Mr. Tackleton comes in and has a great idea. He wants to marry Bertha tomorrow. 
And since Caleb lied his ass off to pretend that Tackleton was a great guy, Bertha is elated. Of course, now that his lies have come home to roost and have put him in some deep shit, what does Caleb decide to do? Why, nothing, of course, because he would still rather have her just live in the lies he's created, even though he will probably make her life more miserable down the line. What a good father. Oh god, no, there's another song. This one, though, is probably the weirdest. Are they on a pie? What? It's so awkward looking. They're just moving around so stiffly. Like, what the... Are they on a pizza? What is going on here? I don't... Oh my god. Well then after that, the guy who's totally not Edward comes in with some big news. But after he finds out Bertha is engaged, he's like, oops, never mind, I'm bailing. Because why bother telling the love of your life you aren't dead? You're not fooling me, sailor boy, I know who you are. Well, the cricket decides he's gonna be the one to put a stop to all this stupidity and tries to annoy Tackleton away. So Tackleton tells his pet crow to get some professional help and take care of the cricket. That's what this movie has come to, we're putting a hit out on a cricket. So he goes to an animal bar? Opium den? I don't... Who knows, who cares? The point is that there's this singing cat lady who's singing about fish and chips or something. I don't know, this is just... This is off the rails, I don't know what the fuck is going on. The crow finds a sailor monkey and a dog and they get the great idea to capture the cricket and sell him to a pirate so that he can sell him to China because apparently they're really good luck. But, I mean, ever since the cricket showed up, this family's lives have gone to hell. I mean, they're flat broke. So, you know, maybe he's not the best at this whole luck thing. Anyway, so they take him to the captain where this happens. Now, where's our pay? I've got your pay off right here. Did he just, he just shot them. He just fucking shot them, like gangster style, took out a gun and shot the three of them. Let's, uh, let's watch that again. I've got your payoff right here. Oh my God. I take it all back, guys. This is incredible. After that bit of comedy gold that, let's just play it one more time. He just fucking shoots them guys. <laughs> oh god. After that, the cricket plays dead so that he is thrown overboard. He then escapes and uses his Aquaman-like powers to have the creatures of the sea take him back home. Then when he gets back on midnight at Christmas Eve, the toys all come to life for no good reason at all. And tell Croc at the cricket that they're all incredibly dumb because the old guy was Edward all along. Oh my god guys, the shock. They then explain that he was just washed up on an island for two years before some whalers found him and brought him home. How do they know this? I don't know, they just go back to being toys right after they explain it. They just throw in there that toys come to life at midnight to explain this twist ending, and they immediately go back to being toys and they pretend it never happened at all. This is some next level bullshit right here. When Edward wakes up, he tells Crockett that he disguised himself because he saw Bertha went blind with grief. And because it was his own fault for almost dying, he decides to lie to her with a disguise. And then, I don't know, he'd probably tell her eventually or something, whatever. Wow, more dishonesty, just like Bertha's dad. You know what, maybe Bertha's just really into super dishonest men. Well, Crockett reunites them with some sensual hand-holding. Then they just leave the shot on their hands. I'm fairly sure they did this because they couldn't animate any sort of emotion on these dead faces. So in the morning, they get married in a creepy looking painting. I really didn't think the art could get any worse, but here we are. I mean, look at what they did to Jesus. Hasn't he suffered enough? I mean, organizing a wedding in a couple hours, that right there is by far the least believable thing. I mean, talking animals, sure. Toys coming to life, why not? But a wedding that quick? Yeah, no way in hell that would happen. Then afterwards, Tackleton shows up and is devastated that his engagement of, what, 20 hours has fallen apart. But well, Bertha gives him a whole bunch of lies to make him feel better about himself and that wraps it all up. The lesson here, lies. Lies and deceit make everything better. And eventually some insect will solve everything. This really is just awful. It's, it's, there's no two ways about it. There's a reason you haven't heard about this movie. It's because it's absolutely terrible. But that's not everything on the DVD. No, no, no. What we have here is, I don't know how well this is going to pick up on the camera, uh, there are uh, two music videos on this. One by uh, Destiny's Child and Mariah Carey. This is where it gets fun. <laughs> Destiny's Child covers Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and they use a lot of scenes from the Claymation movie, with the group being Claymation themselves. This is passable. The cover is alright, and the Claymation looks fine, but the other one. Mariah Carey, on the other hand, covers Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and my god, it's so horrible. 
For this one, they use 3D animation. Really, really awful 3D animation that is just smashed together with footage from another old claymation film called Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Now, I don't want to get a copyright strike, but here's a small excerpt, and you tell me what the problem is. Yeah, it looks natural, right? Love how just her mouth moves and not her face or body to emphasize the powerful pitch like that. This is just unsettling to watch and the cover is too fast paced and feels completely off. It's so amateurish and cringy. But that my friends is this, Cricket on the Hearth. Fuck you, King of Archers. This movie literally cost me a penny. I still feel like I paid way too much for it. Right, well, uh... Whatever. Uh, thank you for showing up for this episode of Call's Heart Complaints. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you liked this episode. Uh, if you do, please leave a comment about what your favorite part of Cricket on the Hearth was. Uh, if you have seen it, and if you have not seen it, what's your favorite part of me uh, disassembling it was. If it's not the three guys getting shot over a cricket, then you guys have made a drastic mistake. He just shoots them. He just shoots them. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, guys, I want you to enjoy your Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I want you to have a fantastic December 25th, no matter what. And if you're British or Canadian, have a nice Boxing Day. I don't know what that's about. Um, my Canadian friends tell me it's like Black Friday, but after Christmas, which sounds interesting, also terrifying. Just don't watch Cricket on the Hearth. That's my professional advice to you guys. Don't watch it. You don't need that in your life. I don't need that in my life. No one needs that in their life. Come on. Again, thank you for watching this episode of Cold Heart Complaints. See ya. Usually I don't talk here at the end, but in all seriousness, check out my friend King of Archer's channel. She reviews DS games and she's really awesome. Links to her channel should be on the screen and in the description below. Also, you could sub to my channel if you want to or haven't already. I mean, that's an option for you. But make sure to sub to her channel. She's really great.